Hello, this is Jenny at Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I have another Christmas card that is part of my Christmas card and craft series for 2021. And I will be creating a full panel shaker card. I'm going to start with this Stampin' Up! Santa and this Unity Stamp Merry Christmas background stamp. I have also pulled out some clear embossing powder and some sequins because all shaker cards need bling. I have some clear iridescent and some gold and some red sequins. To begin with, I will be pulling out my Misty Stamp Positioner. All of the stamps I'm using today are red rubber cling mat stamps, so I can take that black pad, the foam pad, out of my Misty. I'm going to start by stamping the background stamp onto a piece of gray cardstock. I did decide that I didn't want to put the cardstock in the Misty and the stamp on the lid. I'm going to flip that around. The cardstock piece has already been cut down to the size of a card front, so there's not a lot of excess. And it would be a little bit difficult to get all the edges done, stamped properly, if I put the um, cardstock down. So instead, I will just add a little bit of adhesive to the back of this cardstock so that it sticks to the lid of my Misty, and that way I can ink it up kind of backwards. <laughs> I will be using Versamark ink. This ink is clear and sticky and it is the perfect ink for heat embossing. So I'm just going to make sure I mush that ink pad down into that stamp really well, getting all of the letters um, inked up properly. And then I will close my Misty and use the sleeve of my shirt to make sure that I can just rub my hand along that Misty and put nice firm pressure all over the Misty. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that there are tools that have been developed or created to make this part of your stamping process with the Misty easier, but for real, there's no more room on my desk for more tools. <laughs> it's kind of a mess as it is. Because this stamp is a larger font stamp, I want to stamp it again to make sure that all of the letters get all of the ink and all of the embossing powder. It would be very obvious if there was a space that was missing its its letters, or if a letter was missing part of its um, part of itself. <laughs> so I am now going to go ahead and add the clear embossing powder onto my cardstock. I like to keep my most used embossing powders in this kind of plastic pencil case. Um, the handles on the side flip up and clip the lid on but it allows me to put the card front or the piece of cardstock directly over or down into the bin so that all of the cardstock just falls back into the, the little container as it, as it falls off my card front. I apologize for being so far off camera here. And except for when I, you know, dump embossing powder on my stamp, <laughs> there's very little embossing powder I have to clean up later. Once I get this all covered in embossing powder, I will go ahead and heat set this and it's really fun to watch heat heat embossing. I know that heat embossing has been like the the moment in a lot of crafters life where they're like, yep, I'm in. This is my this is my point where I'm all in. Um, clear embossing powder goes on white and you know that it is completely heated when it goes when it changes color, when it goes clear. And it is pretty phenomenal to just watch this white powder melt into these perfectly formed, perfectly stamped little letters. It for sure was my my hook moment. <laughs> it's one of my favorite techniques. Now that I have the background stamped, I am going to go ahead and stamp my Santa Claus and one of the sentiments from this stamp set. This Santa Claus is kind of a, a hand sketched or hand drawn, so it looks really good if you just stamp it tone on tone, but it also looks great if you color it. The sentiment I am using from this stamp, says, stamp set says, He's making his list. And the, the complimentary stamp set that you would like stamp on the inside says, hope you're on the, naughty, the nice list or something to that effect. <laughs> I am also going to stamp these images up with Versamark ink and heat set them with clear embossing powder as well. I am going to go ahead and use my embossing bag on this cardstock. I did not do that before and probably I should have. I got very lucky. I don't want to have stray embossing powder hanging around I want to be able to, the embossing powder to only stick to the ink. Now the font is a rather delicate font. It appears, 
it, it looks like a typewriter font. So I don't want to put too much pressure down because it is so dainty that I have decided to just stamp it twice. You know, moderate pressure stamped twice is better than stamping it one time with a lot of pressure that makes the letters all blur out and bump into each other. And you have to be careful when you're stamping with fonts. If you push them down too hard, they're not, they become not readable, especially when you're heat embossing them. So now that I have this panel all stamped, I'm going to pull my clear embossing powder out again. And same thing, I'll just put that embossing powder right there in the middle of my desk and hang the card panel, the cardstock, right into that bin so that as the embossing powder falls off, it just lands right back in that bin. And I can use the side of the spoon or my finger to tap off any extra. There is a little bit there up in the corner of embossing powder that's stuck to probably oils from my hands or something, but I have this dry brush I keep in my desk drawer that I can just brush it off with. And probably it really would not have been a problem because I am going to be cutting these out. And since my heat tool was still super warm, this embossed really, really fast. So now I need to cut these out. I will be using these waffle flower circle dies to cut out the Santa Claus, the honeybee stamp, banner dies to cut out my sentiment, and the A2 layer dies to cut the panel down just a bit. So I began with the second A2 layer die to cut down that panel. And I like to use my tweezers to pull them out because then I'm not jacking up my nail polish. That's the real reason. I'm not jacking up my nail polish. <laughs> I'm hard on my nails. I need to keep them nice as nice as long when I polish them. There's nice. I need to keep them Nice as long as possible. There we go. <laughs> when I polish them, I am going to use some washi tape to tape that die down. And then I decided that that was, mm, I wanted it just a little smaller. So I did um, change my mind and go down one more die to the, the third from the largest die in this die set. And that probably makes this panel about four inches by five and a quarter inches. I did not measure. That's why I have these dies so that I don't have to measure. <laughs> and I'm going to tape that down. I am using a very low tack washi tape. It is super old, so it doesn't very stick very well anymore, and it will not tear my paper. I am going to use my tweezers and pull out one of these circle dies to go around the Santa Claus. And I am going to kind of um, put the die right at the edge of the stamp. You know, I don't want it obvious that the stamp ends. I want it to look like I cut him out, you know, cut that piece of him out on purpose. So I'm just going to use that same tape and tape that die in place. And then I will pull out the banner dies to cut my sentiment out. Now I'm not sure exactly which banner die I'm going to need. I experiment with one and then decide to go up to a larger die. It's, it's hard to tell if the cut line from the banner would be completely off of the, the sentiment. And in the end, I did decide to go up one size and it was a good thing. I think if I had used that, that first banner die, I probably would have cut off part of the sentiment. So I am going to go ahead and tape that banner down, mm, banner die down as well, and send that through my die cut machine and through the magic of television, voila, or the magic of editing. <laughs> there we go, everything is all cut out. So now I'm going to begin my shaker portion. And this is a style of shaker card that I first saw on Christina Warner's channel. And I will link to her card right up here. This is a full panel shaker card. And normally when you have um, a shaker card, there's some kind of dimension or a bumped up card front. And this is not going to have any foam tape. I know. It's crazy, but it works and it looks wonderful. The first thing I'm going to do is take this very strong double-sided adhesive. I believe this is called Sequin tape. Hopefully I am pronouncing that correctly. I purchased it off Amazon this last time. I think before that I've gotten it at like um, scrapbook.com I think is where I got some and maybe even Simon's stamp, who knows. But this is a very strong adhesive and it will hold this panel together. Once I have the tape on all four sides, I am going to take my pokey tool and take the backing paper off of three of the sides. I want to leave the backer on that adhesive on the top. 
So I only want to remove the backer paper off three sides. I need to leave one end open so that I can dump the shaker bits into this panel, into this pocket I'm creating. Now that I have the three sides taken off, I am going to lay this down onto this piece of plastic. This plastic is just leftover stamp packaging. It already had that crease in it, so it's kind of perfect. I'm going to trim that flap down just a little bit and use my fingers to really press down hard on that plastic to make sure that it's adhering nicely to that adhesive. And then I will do the same thing on both sides. Now I want to pull this tight enough that it's not saggy, but I don't want to pull it so tight that the cardstock buckles or that the sequins won't shake around in the card when I've got it all put together. So there is kind of a fine line between too much and not enough. <laughs> And um, when I folded it over, it did kind of create these little pockets of plastic or little flaps of plastic that did not lay down. So I just trimmed those off. And now that I've got this folded down, I'm gonna flip it over and add some sequins. So I'm starting with my red sequins. If I ever get the container open. <laughs> these little containers are wonderful, but they are very difficult to open. And I am going to dump some sequins down into this card. And I'm going to stop and look at it and go, heck, I can put more in there. This is a full panel shaker card. It can handle some sequins. And for real, if I use a ton of sequins, it's okay because they're probably the least expensive thing in my craft room, right? And they add a huge amount of bling to this card. So it's perfect. I have no problem using a whole bunch of sequins on this card. I've added the gold and now I'm going to add a few of these iridescent um, clear kind of sequins. And then we're gonna go ahead and close up this package or this um, panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and flip that flap of, um, piece of plastic over the top to make sure everything is shaking around enough, make sure it's not too thick or that the plastic is, is um, too tight. And I'm going to go ahead and take that backer tape off and go ahead and stick that plastic down. And again, the folded over flaps create little um, wings or whatever that are not folded down or not stuck down. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that over and make sure everything shakes nicely and it looks pretty and it's moving around. It doesn't seem to be done up too tight because the, the cardstock is laying flat. So now that I have got this done, I have decided that I need to be a little extra and I'm going to add scotch tape on the edges of all of the plastic. I don't know that this is actually necessary, but I felt like it was. <laughs> so I am just going to add a little bit of scotch tape to the back of that to keep those plastic parts down. I don't want anybody opening a card that they got in the mail for me and having um, sequins explode all over them. Okay, I take that back. I did make a card that had exploding pieces, but that was on purpose. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and create my card base. I am using this dark green cardstock. It is half of a piece of cardstock at four and one quarter inches by 11 inches tall. And I will score that in half at five and a half inches and create a top folding portrait style A2 size card. This is my favorite kind of card to make because my brain says it's easier to put all the layers on when the fold is on the top. It's really not easier, but my brain says it's easier. So now that I've got that all folded and, and creased nicely, I'm going to line it up with the lines on my grid mat so that I can properly line up the panel. I am going to adhere this panel with that really strong adhesive again. And this time, instead of going around the perimeter, I am going to take the tape and go across the back. Again, don't know if that was necessary. Don't know if it helped. It was just something that my brain said, hey, do this. So I did. You know, sometimes you just go with the flow, right? Once I have this tape down, I am going to um, go ahead and pick off that um, backer tape with my pokey tool. And I am being very, very careful not to poke into the plastic. I don't want to make a hole that will cause all those sequins to fall out as well. And I'm being much more delicate and gentle than normally I am. And I've got that last piece of backer paper peeled off and I am going to center that card card, card base, there we go, onto my grid mat. And I am going to just use the lines on my grid mat to visually center this panel onto the front of my card. 
Okay, and it looks like it's stuck, and I'm going to throw it around my desk a couple of times and make sure all the sequins move, and it does. They move, and they look pretty, and you can still mostly read the Merry Christmas in the background, and it's exactly how I imagined it. Now I am going to adhere my Santa Claus, and again, I am going to use this really um, strong adhesive. And I have decided that instead of sticking him right in the center, which, you know, is kind of probably my norm, I am going to drop this circle down to the bottom right hand corner of my card. And once I have this card adhere, or this circle adhered to my card, I then decide that I want to cut the edges of the circles off to line up with the gray panel. I don't know if it makes any difference. It looks good both ways, but that's what I decided I wanted to do. If I had thought about it before, uh, beforehand, <laughs> I probably would have glued the Santa Claus circle on before I attached the panel to my card base, but whatever. It is what it is. And for whatever reason, I decided I needed to turn my scissors around right there because they were not cutting properly. And I laughed at myself when I did that. And I laughed at myself again when I was watching this footage and doing the voiceover because those scissors cut both the same on both sides. <laughs> that was just silliness. I am going to add a little bit more adhesive to the bottom of this circle because I want it to stick. I want to make sure that it does not come off of that plastic sequin pouch. Now I need to adhere my sentiment and I'm going to use that same double-sided um, sequin tape that I used before, again, because I'm sticking it to that plastic and I really want it to stay on. And we're almost done with this card. This was a super quick, easy way to make a shape, shaker card. Wow, can't speak English tonight. It, I've never had one that was quite so easy to make. So thank you, Christina, for this awesome inspiration. And yeah, everything's moving around perfectly. And I'm going to go ahead and add the liner to the inside of my card. This is a piece of copy paper that has been trimmed down to four inches by five and one quarter inches. I feel like it finishes the inside of my card off nicely, especially when I'm using a dark card stock. And it gives me some place to write a message to the recipient. So there you have it, a full panel shaker card where everything moves and shakes and you have no foam tape, no dimension. It's awesome, I love it. Here is a little bit of a close-up and some other photos. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you're enjoying my Christmas card and craft series. I have linked a couple other videos here for you to watch and the subscribe button. If you have not subscribed yet, I hope you will. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a really fantastic day.